Hi, my name is Olin Ziada, and I'm a New York City-based director and creator of theater, television, and film. And I'm also a proud Phoenix Global Artist Ambassador. Today, I am so excited to be speaking with the world-renowned painter, printmaker, and spiritual warrior, Ani Kruger. For more on Ani, you can read more about her right below this video. But in the meantime, here is my interview with the amazing Ani Kruger. Well, hello, Ani. How are you? Fine. Ani, we have had such a fun pre-interview talk. I wish people saw that portion, but we will get into it. Ani, I haven't met you yet, but the fact that you are not only a painter, a printmaker, but a spiritual warrior, and that's how you what you call yourself, I am like, I dig <laughs> Ani Kruger 110%. I want to begin, Ani, with you. Ani, where did you grow up and when did you know that you had a knack for and a love of art? Uh, let's see, I started out in Connecticut um, and there was my first exposure to anything creative, which was quilts, quilting with my great grandmother and grandmother. And then we moved to Rumson, New Jersey when I was nine or 10, it was, wait, six, yeah. Um, and so I guess I'm not technically a Jersey girl, but I grew up there. So I call myself a Jersey girl. Bonnie, I get it. Listen, I call myself a Brooklyn boy. I was there for six months. I don't remember it, but you know what? It makes it, it sounds, it's, 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 it sounds good as part of the story, you know? It goes with this, with the warrior thing. I think, you know, Well, and this is now where I want to go. Um, we will get into your amazing, amazing career that you've had as a painter and a printmaker. And obviously people can look below this video for your bio and look you up um, with, on your website and beyond. But the spiritual warrior part, why do you add that? I think it's important because it's really important to me. I, um, I spent a lot of time trying to figure out in my own way like why we're always at war with each other over religious mm. differences mm. and um i was brought up congregational then presbyterian new catholic people met a whole bunch of folks from india when i was in college and it just i i mean i guess growing up where i did it, i wasn't really exposed to a lot of other religions and it just fascinates me because we're all seeking something outside of ourselves that that will sort of help us get through stuff um and i do a lot of yoga and meditation and i don't know i, th I think it's important that we stay spiritually fit i think it's important too and ani you know just based upon the artwork that i've seen on your website and beyond i can tell that you are uh an artist who has done the work and continues to do the work and there is a spiritual enlightened groundedness that also has a sense of whimsy uh, about, about it. And so I find it very interesting that your curiosity- add prankster. <laughs> oh, you mean add prankster to your title now? Yes, I love playing jokes. <laughs> but, but so, I mean, look at, you just met me, right? But that yeah. even that sense of play comes through. And, okay. and I mean, I feel it in your spirit now. And I think that also speaks to the fact that your artwork speaks to not only adults, but kids and the kids within adults. Is that something that you think about while you're creating? Very much so, because I, I feel like, well, I'm a big um, purveyor, no, no, that's not the right the word, um, believer in having a beginner's mind, you know, and, and not, and trying very hard to unlearn a lot of the, the, the shoulds growing up um, and I try to keep like a childlike approach to things and it gets in the way because you know I'll start be like uh, let's try something all new today but it, in the end it all comes through but um, yeah I think it's 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 work to keep your opinions to yourself and and keep your mind open you I know think like you're right. experience I think you're right look at uh, as an artist myself I find that making the choice is sometimes hard to live in a world, a mindset of possibility. I think it allows us as artists though, in the end, to be the clearest of vessels we can be. And when I look at you and I hear you and I see your work, 
I look at someone who truly does look at themselves as a vessel. I'm curious to know how ideas for, you know, some of the amazing work that you've done come to you. Um, well, as we were talking about earlier, it's a lot of it is based on nature and in, and in the environment. Um, mad about flowers and I love the, um, the structures of them and just the incredible designer, whoever up there came up, came up or wherever they come from, these um, designs, but also the fragility, you know, because they're, they're just so ephemeral. And, and to paint all the iris is, it's like you have the, the, the vase of flowers and within an hour, it's, it's all changed because, you know, and it's, and I think too, the, the whole part about painting in nature is that, you know, you just have all this, it changes all the time, you know, especially up in Maine where I paint, you know, they have the tide, which goes 12 feet here and there, and you get the sun and the wind and, you know, it just, um, it never gets boring. You know, Ani, I'm, I'm right now, uh, I don't think you even know this, but I'm right now creating and set to direct an original musical about Vincent van Gogh. And really? there's something beautiful about the way that he paints the breath of work, but also the work that seems to breathe. And I get that from your work. So it's interesting when you mention your love of flowers, I, and I look at your work and I see a, a very similar love of the dichotomy of the beauty and the fragility and um that dichotomy <laughs> i'm sorry you do get me oh ani i mean like i know i talk a lot but you know i believe me my husband reminds me i talk a lot but i really i talk in how i feel from my gut and you know in my research of van gogh but now also getting to know you and having done my, you know, my own homework on you, I noticed that dichotomy that you love. And it's, again, you, the choice that you make, the wonderful choice that you make to examine the beauty of the dichotomy instead of the dis-ease of the dichotomy. I'm curious that childlike mind that you have and continue to hold on to, what, has that always been within and was that always encouraged for you? I would definitely say I was not encouraged um, <laughs> as a child. Um, you know, I think it's just who I am. I, um, I'm really curious. I ask a lot of questions. I believe oftentimes it, it may work against me as a teacher or like, you know, students expect to have answers and I'm always asking questions. I don't really provide a lot of answers. I think it's more important that they provide their own answers, but, um, and now I've lost the train of thought. No, Ani, you know what? I'm going to help you out here because it makes me think about what my favorite three words are as a director in a room is I don't know. And my actors, sometimes I could sense they want to strangle me. But you know what we're providing as teachers? We're providing others to look within and to do their own work and to realize that there is no right or wrong answer because whatever their truth is, that's enough. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And... I think it's a hard thing, I think, at times for people to really hear and listen to because we live in a world that loves the tangible and the answer right now in a cute little box ribbon, you know, but that's not the world and that's not life. And also that's not interesting. I know, I know. Yeah, but um, anyway, so I think it's just who I am. I'm, I'm that's who I am, I guess. Ani, I, I love the fact that you're, you know, you're coming on board Phoenix and, you know, I've already been able to meet so many amazing, um, in my field, composers in the East that I'm already collaborating with because of my involvement with Phoenix. And I think about the transcendent quality of your work and a word that I've been using with a lot of artists. And, you know, to, the idea of you not gaining, not only gaining more people, um, within your arsenal of fans of your work and purchaser, purchasers of your work, but the idea of possibly collaborating with others throughout the world. Um, I don't, what does that mean to you? That means an awful lot. I mean, printmaking as a practice is very, you kind of have to collaborate. Um, 
because not everybody has a press. So I'm very familiar with the concept. <laughs> and, um, and I, you know, I, I love it. I think it's great. It's a wonderful way to, to get out of yourself and reach a new level. But I mean, if nothing else, the pandemic has taught me, I crave connection. And that's mm. the important thing. It's like stuff is stuff, but people, you know, especially now are real people in person it's kind of key um but now i'm going off again <laughs> another tangent i not at all you know i think you're absolutely right look at this has been a time because well, we as artists i mean you're it's different when you're working with people but if you're a painter you know you're in your studio you're by yourself um but you know with when when you're around a press with a bunch of people i mean printmakers are notorious for they just want to trade trade techniques and, and it's like oh you look at a print like oh how'd they do that you know <laughs> oh let's figure that one out and you know and it's a little nerdy but um but it all leads to so much it's it's so much bigger than the individual parts right yeah no that's absolutely right and if there's been a time when we've been forced to kind of look within to you know investigate what's superfluous and what's like the crux of the matter. I've, I've come to the same conclusion as well, because also as an artist, you know, when I'm coming up with ideas for a show, it's one thing to like stay in my head and in, in my little apartment in New York, but to then be able to converse with others, to collaborate, to have the German of idea open up with other minds involved. It's, it's something I'm, I don't want to say that, and I don't know if you agree or not, but I never took, I never took it for granted, but I'll never, ever even remotely take it for granted again because of this time, you know? Right. Or, or just the spontaneity of, of wandering into a gallery. You know, now you have to like make an appointment and <laughs> like, what are you asking? Um, yeah, I'm, I'm craving that again. Totally. Uh, well, Ani, listen, I could talk to you forever, but uh, um, I look forward to talking with you more some other time. But in the meantime, I can't wait for the audience to look you up if they don't know who you are already you are not only a fantastic painter printmaker uh spiritual warrior prankster as we know from the end of this interview but uh you're a great human and i'm grateful to have met you thanks i'm grateful to have met you too in the digital age artists and bands struggle to make a living in fact only a small number of artists can live off their craft for the 98% of artists that don't have the luxury of being signed to a label, it's tough. But artists deserve to live off their art. Wherever you are around the world, appreciation of music does not change. Phoenix brings bands and their fans together, whilst allowing bands to properly monetize their passion. The Phoenix app will directly connect bands and fans with no need for middlemen. We're utilizing the blockchain to give the power back to the artists once and for all. Join Phoenix, join the change.